The first ever Pac-12 Beach Volleyball Championships are underway. The push for the pairs title is on. Next. It's time to get Sandy live from the campus of USC. It's the first ever Pac-12 Beach Volleyball Championships. The Pairs title is on the line inside Merle Norman Stadium. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us. I'm Anne Marie Anderson alongside three-time Olympian Holly McPeak. Holly, first ever Pairs title on the line. What can we expect today? Well, it's exciting right now. Two semifinals, four schools represented, but the headliners have to be Kelly Clays and Sarah Hughes, 36 and 0, the number one team in the country. Well, let's take a look at the brackets because it's going to be like you're seeing double a little bit. One of the semifinals features two sets of identical twins. Madison and McKenna Witt for Arizona and Megan and Nicole McNamara from UCLA. That's going to be a fun one to call. But right now we're going to feature Clays and Hughes against Whitney Follett and Bianca Ariana from Arizona State. Yeah, it's all kind of panned out the way that you would expect it to as we take a look at our two box. The top four pairs seeds will be playing off. Two courts of action happen concurrently. We're going to start our look on court number one with Clays and Hughes versus Follette and Ariano. That's one versus four. Clays and Hughes, Holly, you mentioned the headliners really 36-0 this season. They have literally been unstoppable. Well, they are definitely the team to beat, but Whitney Follett is very big and physical at the net and Bianca Ariano is a great feisty defender behind. They can present some interesting challenges with their coach Deb Rose from Arizona State. He really said they need to come out swinging. They can't match this USC team shooting the ball. They need to be up and aggressive. Yeah, we've talked so much about the first part of beach volleyball and being aggressive is the serve and maybe nobody serves better in the country perhaps than Clays and Hughes. And that's, that's the key for Arizona State. They need to be able to side out and continue to look for opportunities to score defensively. For Follett and Ariano, an exciting couple of weeks for them, Holly, because they really seem to be peaking at the right time. They beat the Witt sisters of Arizona just a couple of weeks ago, so they're peaking at the right time. Well, and the Witt sisters from Arizona were previously undefeated, so that was a big win. They came out in January from the indoor game and started their sand. So their timing is getting better, peaking at the right time. Ariano's first serve goes long to the corner. Hughes follows it out. Arizona State going to start testing Sarah Hughes, but not afraid to switch it up if that's not working. Hughes goes to Ariano, the smaller of the two players. And a little shot over Clays. Bianca Ariano not afraid of the block, challenges and goes over Kelly Clays down the line for the kill. Ariano listed at five foot eight. Follette now serving for Arizona State at six foot two. And again, they stay with the plan of going Hughes. No blocker on. And just looking for the deep middle. Well, interesting, that was a pretty easy point scoring opportunity. Follette and Ariano we're off the net in a good position to dig, and we're just tentative digging this middle ball. Clay's serving, the fiery redhead, six foot two for USC, the top ranked team in the nation. Again, they stay with Ariano. Follett, option on two. Beautiful execution on the option play. That means the passer puts it up there, big hitter, attacks the ball on two for an easy side out. And Holly, you spent much of your career playing on a big little team like this. Option going to be a huge part of Arizona State's offense today. Well, both teams have great ball control players and a big player at the net. It's always a good play. And you see USC goes right back. Kelly plays with the left-hand option play. Hughes back to serve. Will she serve at Ariano again? She does. Going to the outside of Ariano. Ball at sets. Follett holds off the set, not where Kelly Clays wanted She's to put it. Highlight, highlight. Yes. But the block shut down by Kelly Clays. Whitney Follett uses her length, tools the Kelly Clays block out of bounds. Kelly Clays dives into that ball, makes a good block move. Hands out of bounds for Arizona State. These two teams trading blows early. 
And Hughes, short cutting. Sarah Hughes has every shot growing up playing on the beach. Beautiful side out for USC. Starts with a good pass. Kelly Clays puts that ball right up at the net. Cut shot, sharp. 4-3 side switch for these teams. You're only allowed a brief discussion on a slow walk with your coach on the side switch. And while the side switch happened, the sun came out a little bit, peeking out behind a cloud. It's now in the face of Ariano and Follette. First serve that went to Follette. I think she was a little surprised. There's the tough serve. Yeah, well, Whitney Follette does not pass indoors, too. So that's a new skill that she has to do on the beach that she doesn't do indoors. Yeah, she served for Arizona State's team middle. She served right and left her brief stints. So they go at her again and an ace serve in the corner from Clays. So if I'm Bianca Ariano, I scoot Whitney Follette over and I take more of the court. Take the pressure off Whitney Follette, who's not used to passing. Clearly a side switch change. And Paulette happy to get Clays off the service line. Good, aggressive side out. Kelly Clays had pulled off the net. Paulette hits it hard enough that Clays can't control it. Third season of the Arizona State program. This is the first year for Paulette and Ariana to be playing together. And Hughes just goes right over that line. Well, High line shot, Sarah Hughes elevates. She's small but jumps well and able to clear that fallette block. Hughes returns to serving Ariano. Clays pulls off. Line! Block will be waiting for her and sharp she goes for Sarah Hughes. Ariano got a little tentative on this last side out play. Sarah Hughes gobbles up that shot and hammers it sharp cross court for the kill. Pushed it a little bit too wide that time. Interesting, Holly, that Hughes is consistently making Ariano go to her right to that sideline away from Follett for that first pass. Well, you want Bianca Ariano to have a, just a little room and have to be perfect going down that line, and Sarah Hughes feels like she can dig that cut shot. But D Coach Deb Rose for Arizona State said, look, you know what, our team needs to stay aggressive. We can't be intimidated. We have to be aggressive on our side out. Nine of five side switch again. That side switch was completely dominated by Clays and Hughes. Place goes after Follette again. Season opening and Follette puts it inside the block. Well, it's interesting. A little tough pass. Bianca Ariano puts up a hittable ball, but I'm impressed by Whitney Follette. Big block at the net. She sees the open court and beats the blocker for Arizona State. She's staying up on it. Poked by Hughes. And Clays on the empty ball up top. She snaps on it. Well, for Arizona State, Whitney Follette touched that ball on the block, so she had to bump it over. I would have liked to see a more aggressive, even a standing spike would have been better than the short bump over. Ariano, no one on the net. Shows she's got some strength down the middle. I love that play. Ball was set a little off the net in the middle of the court. No block. Always that deep middle is a beautiful shot. Ariana gets her feet to the ball. Beautiful execution. Well passed by Clays. Follette waiting for her. Change of pace. Can't tell if the defensive signals got crossed up for Arizona State, but nobody in the angle. They doubled up on the line. Bianca Ariano, one of the indoor setters for That's Arizona right. State's team, doesn't pass a lot either. But handling all the passing on the beach. Straight down the middle again, but it is long. Missed by an inch, but gosh, she's right on target, aiming for that deep middle ball. Now the Wildcats serving with Madison with 10-38. Step one on both courts. 
Plays goes at Ariano this time. Pulls off. Little shot from Ariano. Follett waiting for it. Ball hits the sharp, and it's another point for SC. I feel like if Kelly Clays is going to drop off the net, you don't want to shoot it in front of her easy because then it's an easy set and transition. At least make her work from the back of the court. Going for that line. It goes a little bit long, but it was a breath holder. Well, Kelly Clays going aggressive at Follette, just missing. First ever Pac-12 Beach Volleyball Championship plays in Hughes, the perfect pair, greeting everybody on their way in. You're watching Pac-12 Los Angeles, home of their turf, or is there an upset brewing? Today at 5 on Pac-12 Network. Welcome back to Merle Norman Stadium on the campus of USC. This is the 2016 Pac-12 Beach Volleyball Pairs Championship Semifinal. Two matches going on concurrently right now. We're going to return to the action on court number one. Clays and Hughes of USC dominating Ariano and Follett of Arizona State. And the Witt twins up 12-9, excuse me, 12-10 over McNamara, McNamara from UCLA. Top four seeded pairs making it to the semifinals today in the first ever Pac-12 Pairs Championship. And that's the wall of Canada, Whitney Follett. Bianca Ariano loves her big block in front of her and appropriately and affectionately calls her the great wall of Canada. And you see why. Originally from St. Albert, Canada, six foot two, Follett, relatively new to the beach game over the last couple of years. And, oh, an opportunity missed by Clays. Whitney Follett also has uh, some amazing blocking records for Arizona State, one of the best blockers they've ever had. Yeah, on the indoor side. On the indoor side, correct. Going at Hughes. Follett up to the state, close to the cross. Holly, what happened there? Well, great <laughs> identification. Whitney Follett tried to switch it up and drop into the angle, but Sarah Hughes saw it went deep rainbow shot. That's not easy to do. It is the number one thing we hear from coaches in every conversation, Holly, is the difficulty of knowing how to drop effectively and when to do it. No blocker. Short shot from Mariano. That time very well executed by Bianca Ariano. Kelly Clay's going hard. Good pass by Ariano. She stays behind the ball. Blocker retreats to dig short by Ariano for the kill. Clay's got it. Kelly Clay's short cut shot leaned the other way and then went cross court. Five-point lead for USC's Clays and Hughes in this best two of three semifinal. Ariano with the option. Clays waiting for it, but the great defense on the other side. Uh-oh, left hand from Clays. Well, I love that Bianca Ariano was right there covering her partner on the option play, but then the transition set. Follette didn't take care of the ball with her feet. Overset, easy USC kill. If you want to beat a team like Clays and Hughes, you have to take care of the little things. Keep the match close and wait for an opportunity to score. Yeah, and an easy kill, you say, for Clays. It was her left hand again, something we've seen all year. She is a natural right-hander, but decided in her sophomore year of high school that she was going to develop a left hand. Because she was an indoor setter, and that's an asset when you're a big setter to be able to go up and attack a perfect pass with your left hand. So she uses it when she needs to. Anna Collier, the head coach of USC, her fifth season as the Trojans head coach, the number one team in the nation. Look at that win percentage for her. Well, it's very impressive. USC has been all in with their beach volleyball program from the beginning, and Anna Collier has been at the head. So I feel like they've, they're ahead of most of these programs in terms of depth, experience, and their training level. And we were talking about Kelly Clays' left hand, Anna Collier, telling us before the match, at first we had to tell her she wasn't allowed to use it because she was using it as a bailout. Once she proved to us that she was able to use it as a weapon, it was different. And I talked with Kelly Clays about it, and she said, basically, I'm not allowed to be cute with it. That was her phrase. I can't be cute with it. Well, well, she's such a good athlete, and she's got quick feet. 
you don't want it to be a bailout so you're not getting to the ball to properly hit it and just swinging with your left hand. And when I teach the young kids, I say, look, it's great that you can use your left hand, but get your feet there to hit the ball with your right hand. Hughes continues to serve at Ariano. A little pokey is plenty high. Ariano knows the length of Kelly Clays very well. But Clays happy to go high into that corner. Well, that's a very difficult shot knowing when to use it at the right time. But the rainbow well executed. Whitney Follett surprised by that one. Good turn off the block as well. Option not effective the way that they would hope, but Clays is going to punish it for it. If you're going to option on two, you have to be aggressive and see the block in front of you. If Kelly Clays drops off the net, Whitney Follett needs to hit that ball hard. Again, the pressure remains on Ariana from Hughes' serve. Big up, and Follett goes to work, putting it away. Whitney Follett can own the net when she wants to. She's big and strong and sees an opening and takes advantage. Plays just a little pokey, and it is set point for USC's Kelly Clays and Sarah Hughes. Kelly Clays started the match on Follett, now going all to Ariana. Set point. Tough serve, goes to Follett. And Follett keeps it simple. She does, but she's got such nice offensive range. Catches Sarah Hughes leaning the other way, able to put that ball down. These two teams met once before this season. Hughes and Clays taking it in two sets. Hand set. And Follett wants that one back as it gets caught up in her hands. And set number one goes to Clays and Hughes. But that's just one of our semifinals happening today. Let's take a look, Holly, at the other court where Arizona's Witt Twins are in the lead. Arizona leads 19-16. And this is a really interesting matchup. Two pairs of identical twins that represent their schools in the one positions. Megan McNamara on the back line going at McKenna Witt on the left side for Arizona. Jay Stover. McKenna Witt has 10 kills in this set alone. This is a battle. Back and forth, a little one along the line, still picked up, but it was a little bit of a tape shot from McKenna Witt to put him at set point. Well, it's interesting. The Arizona Twins, both players are right-handed for UCLA, one's left, one's right. So for the Arizona Twins, it's much more difficult to tell them apart. There's the lefty, Nicole, puts it away. Retreating blocker, all four of these players are very quick, are good at the net, but can pull off the net and play defense as well. McKenna crushes it to take the first set for Arizona. As Arizona and USC have won the first sets of the pair's semifinals. Best two out of three will UCLA and Arizona State answer back. Well, I think for Arizona State, I think they're kind of feeling out USC in the first set. I think they're gonna be better in the second. We'll see what adjustments these teams make. First set in the book, the Pac-12 Pairs Championship rolls on. How many gasoline car buying can be with True Car? Welcome back to Pac-12 Beach Volleyball Pairs semifinal underway. We're going to join the action on court number two. Plays in Hughes and Ariano and Fallout are playing on court one. But let's take a look at court two, Holly. The Witt Twins versus the McNamara Twins. And when we left, you said there's trouble trying to figure out which ones won. It takes a moment. You have some ways that you kind of identify them. Well, <laughs> you have to when you're calling it for TV, but... McKenna, the left-sider's got to watch on. 
and Nicole for UCLA has got tape on her shoulder. That's, so those are my identifying factors. But you would do that as a player too as well, right? Have a way that you would absolutely separate them. Yeah, and, and as a professional, usually you don't have numbers on, so that helps as well. Tied up at two apiece. First set taken by Arizona's Witt sisters. McKenna did the bulk of the hitting. And the McNamara's will let nothing drop. McKenna continues to crush. Megan McNamara blocked by Madison Witt. Big block at the net. Both these teams great defensively. They're so quick, touching lots of balls. It's fun to watch these two teams pair up. It's interesting, Arizona has 21. And I was going to say they had mirror images of each other on the numbers, like 31 and 13 for UCLA. But they don't. Interesting that both of these pairs really are the leaders, not only the one pairs for their respective schools, but really the leaders in terms of setting the work ethic. The Wits came in with a very high volleyball IQ and the McNamara's elevated the program according to head coach Stein that's here immediately. Oh, it, and you can see what it's done to the UCLA program and how these girls lead their their schools. Arizona, the Wits really raising the bar, but that ball was a net violation for Arizona on the block. These two teams met once before this season on March 12th in LA and the Wits defeated the McNamara's Tough serve, but well set, just into the net by McKenna Witt. Tough serve by Nicole McNamara, McKenna Witt hitting air. The set was a little off the net, and she caught tape. Service error there, talking with Stein Metzger about the ways the McNamara's have tweaked their game as the season has gone along. And one of them, he said, they've gotten far more aggressive on their setting and uh, their serving. Well, both of those skills, setting and serving, are key if you want to elevate your game. And they notice there's a higher level now at the collegiate game. They had to step up. And the second side switch on court one. You want to draw eight in the center of six. And the lefty with the rainbow to the corner. I love when a hitter identifies that the blocker is in her angle. Nicole McNamara sees the block, move inside, and then knows that there's an opening right behind her. The Wicks again, McKenna. Trying to find a spot in the aggression of Megan McNamara. I'm not a fan of the over on two handset. Backwards is usually open, but not in front unless the team has already dropped off the net. McKenna Witt on loads. Well, great rundown by Madison to save that pass. The pass went a little too far right. She runs us down, back bumps us, puts her partner, her sister, in a great position to kill that ball. Nobody on for Megan McNamara. Most teams go at Nicole McNamara, the lefty. This time, Megan McNamara gets a good opportunity on the left side. Retreating blocker, fast kill down the middle. Little shot. Well, you heard the call by Madison with saying high line, but the cut shot drops cross court. As a player, the call is an option if you don't see what's open. But if you see what's open, like the cut shot there, you take it. Well, with some of the teams that aren't at this level, these are very skilled pairs. We've talked with coaches. That call can be a bit of a panic call at times, too. I mean, it's part of the game as well. Well, court vision is one of the hardest things about beach volleyball. And even at the highest level, there's players who don't see the court well. So these players identifying what's going on on the other side and finding the opening is pretty impressive. UCLA continues to go after McKenna Witt, and McKenna Witt continues to deliver. 
Both of these teams are very solid. Not a lot of errors, certainly not a lot of apparent, apparently mental errors from them. The fun thing about watching them play is the ball control, the defense. All four of these players can do everything. They block at the net, they retreat, they can pass, they can set, they can do it all. That time they went by Madison Witt and she kills down on. Well, I think the McNamara's are challenged trying to figure out who they can score points off, mixing it up, trying Madison on the right who finds the line open. Tied up at nine apiece. Arizona's Wit sisters won the first set. Off the net, picked up. Nicole, the lefty pokes. And then put away by Madison. That is a very athletic play by Madison. She turned, got the short shot over the block, and without an approach, watch her turn, control that ball. With no approach, she turns, quick arm swing to put that ball away. That is not easy to do. And what sisters look like they're in a bit of a dance. I mean, they are in perfect unison right now. Cut shot is wide. And is that chemistry built in? I mean, these are... <laughs> You spent a lot of time together, and Madison I feel like Matt both of hurt. these pairs move very well together. As freshmen, this team took a lot of lumps. They were learning the beach game, but only one loss this Go season. Go. Well, it's interesting when you ask, is it built in? Because Steinmetz was saying of the Matt Maris that Sean Fallowfield is his couple's therapist working with his twins. Yo, you're not seeing double, you're seeing the Pac-12 Beach Volleyball Semifinals. More double trouble right after the break. ...of the USC Trojans. You're watching... This is True Car. ...on point number two. Welcome back to Beach Volleyball action from Los Angeles. Pairs Semifinal, set number two for both of these teams. Let's take a look at the action on court number one. Plays and Hughes took set number one, Holly, over Ariano and Follette. Set two, much tighter. Ariano Follette, just down 11-13. I felt like they'd respond better in the second set, but all the ball's going to Bianca Ariano, and that's where Arizona State is most comfortable. Yeah, making a couple of opportunities yeah, off of Kelly Clay's hitting errors, but there she crushes. Kelly Clay's not afraid to turn it sharp around the big block of Whitney Follette. Hughes and Clays, we mentioned 36 and 0 this season. They've actually only dropped one set all season. It was to the McNamara twins of UCLA who are playing on the other court right now. Nicely set by Follett. Wow. Looks like she's been playing beach all her life, Ariano. Bianca Ariano with a beautiful cut shot. That's why Arizona State is more comfortable with her receiving the serve. She passes well, she's got some nice shots. Yes, Whitney Follett can hammer the ball, but she's not as comfortable passing the ball. Well chased down. Set from Ariano is good. Back and this trying to get her, the Clays just keeps going. The transition short ball against USC doesn't drop very often, but Hughes and Clays have such quick feet. That time, Kelly Clays able to get there with the easy transition kill. When Bianca Ariano first joined Arizona State's indoor team, Jason Watson, then coach, said, I think a lot of people underestimated her passion to compete. And she certainly has shown that last year playing with Macy Gardner on this one's team, this year with Follett. Bianca Ariano, I love to watch her compete indoors and on the beach. Great touch on a killer serve by Kelly Clays down the line. She is frustrated right there. Anna Collier has the defending ABCA pairs champs in Clays and Hughes and the defending team champions in USC. This year, no pairs championship nationally, but there is an NCAA team championship for the first time. It's interesting because it's an NCAA sport. They wanted to really focus on the schools and, and each school represented by 
five pairs. So it's a little disappointing they're getting rid of the pairs because it's fun to watch. Yeah, it is a lot of fun. Maybe we'll add it back in later. But what you do end up seeing are teams like USC and Pepperdine and some others, UCLA as well, who are deep, who have 10 players strong. And you, you really need to have established your program and have some beach-only athletes to have that kind of depth at a high level. Next week, May 6th through the 8th, Gulf Shores, Alabama, the first NCAA team title will be announced, awarded, or decided. decided. Really. That's the word I'm looking for. Yeah, and this Sunday is when the selection committee will decide which eight teams they're going to be in. They're going to be watching plays teams all around the country this week play, and it'll be after our coverage here on Pac-12, the networks of our team championship, that those eight will be decided. There are no automatic bids. But still, the selection committee will be keeping an eye on all the teams here. Service error by Clay's out of the break. She's had a few more errors than typical in this second set. Ariano and Follett have capitalized upon them. Left hand. Interesting. Great hand set by Sarah Hughes, but Kelly Clays uses a right hand approach and then hits it with her left hand. And she's got great range, good control on it. It's impressive. It's really impressive. She said she gained the strength in that arm by throwing the football with her father for hours and hours, trying to intentionally create that kind of strength. Well, it worked. Yeah. I'm thinking about going out and doing that as well. I have no doubt you'll get that done next weekend. <laughs> Bianca Ariana stays aggressive, able to get a little tweak off the tape, and Clays can't control it. Behind the setter, and Clays comes around to the right side, and she is just devastating. Well, it's interesting. Bianca Ariana is such a strong defender. She's right there and just can't control it. Tries to slide under it, but this ball is coming fast. Kelly Clays is explosive. The lead has opened up a bit now, going after Ariano. The option goes a little bit wide, and any error here in Clays and Hughes will roll with it. Whitney Follett tries to find that corner. She found it earlier in the match, just missing in wide. You know, you just play against Clays and Hughes, and you feel the pressure to make it perfect, and that's when unforced errors happen. She's on the pilot. Woo! Come on! Get up, boy! I'm here. Follett. Takes a good swing at it as she should. Hughes picks it up. And this is one that Clays and Hughes will want to capitalize upon. Follett waiting for her. Wall of Canada slowing it down. But Hughes puts it away, and it is match point for Clays and Hughes. Sarah Hughes waits for her opportunity, controls it, and takes advantage of the open court. Hughes and Clays have won 36 matches this season. They sit on the precipice of their 37th. Picked up by Ariano. Solid swing from Bianca Ariano down the line. That's what she needs to do to put the ball away against this USC team. Stay aggressive. Ariano and Follett, a new pair this season for Arizona State. Whitney Follett was on the three pairs last year. She's worked awfully hard to be on there once. Clays. Just puts it where they're not on the cut. It's Clays and Hughes will advance to the finals. And it is match point on the other court as Clays and Hughes will be in the pairs final. And we go to court number two for McNamara and Witt trying to fight off Arizona's Witt twins. Line. The block brings it right back. And so the Witt will face Hughes and Clays. And that's a matchup I think most of us have really been looking forward to all year long. Madison, Witt, and McKenna only have one loss on the whole season. And they will face the undefeated USC Trojans, Kelly Clays and Sarah Hughes. And so Holly, 
the Wits and Hughes and Clays have traveled through, and let's take a look at the brackets. These two teams will face off, and they know each other very well, Wits and Clays Hughes. They've <laughs> faced each other many years in the last couple summers, specifically on the beach. Um, the Wits didn't always play together during the summer, but they faced off a few times, and I think it's going to be a great matchup. Clays and Hughes and the Wits each won the semifinals in domination style. Two sets apiece. What impressed you? Well, the ball control and the defense. I was really impressed with Arizona's defense. Uh, Madison at the block was really strong. Coming up next at the top of the hour, the top two seeds in the Pac-12 will square off. That's going to do it for your semifinals. Don't go anywhere there. Top of the hour, finals. We now join this program already in progress.